Okay, so uh, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, uh, what are the methods we need to use as messengers to effectively communicate the gospel to children. So we said the first thing is to have a good curriculum, to have uh, choose the relevant topics based on the developmental needs or the spiritual messages that we need to communicate the needs of children in that specific age group. And then uh, based on each topic, we uh, have the uh, lesson objectives. And once those uh, lesson objectives are neatly spelled out or written out, then we can choose the narratives that best you know, fit into or cater to the lesson um, objectives. And once you have all of them in place, uh, it's important to write out all the topics, the lesson objectives for each topic, and then choose the narratives. And then you can kind of play around, move around, which you think best suits, uh, you know, like for prodigal son, you can have that for a couple of uh, topics, but where will it best fit? fit or uh, uh, likewise for the other narratives as well okay once you have all that in place it's important that you prepare well uh, uh, by writing out a lesson plan uh, there is no substitute for a, a well-prepared teacher uh, classroom control uh, can, can improve significantly in most of your classes when you are prepared well and, uh, you know, uh, your teaching is very me interesting and effective. Uh, so if you're spending adequate time preparing for your class, it means that you are going to be utilizing the time that you are spending in teaching the children more productively. Okay, so the more time you spend, the adequate time you spend preparing for your class, it means that the time that you're going to utilize in teaching them is going to be more productive. Because children en uh, will enjoy your class, they will learn, they will receive, and they will soak in most of what you are teaching them, and they will be motivated to learn. Okay. Now, a good thumb rule is to spend uh, no less than four times the length of your teaching time in preparation. So, for example, if you have a 30-minute teaching time or your class is basically you're given 30 minutes to teach, then you should spend no less than, what is four times of 30? Two hours of preparation. You might be thinking, excuse me, two hours to prepare for a 30-minute class to teach children ages five to, seven, uh, five to seven, yes, you know, because, um, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, we'll run through the uh, lesson plan, what are the components for a lesson plan, and you'll know that you will need more than even just two hours, okay? Now, the topic is difficult. You'll need more than uh, two hours because it needs more detailed explanation, you need more thought process to think, uh, more time you spend and how you're going to really communicate those concepts and those truths. Another important to keep in uh, Im important thing to keep in mind is that if you're teaching this Sunday, now suppose this Sunday uh, I'm going to be teaching at children's church, then I don't prepare on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening or Saturday night it's not going to really help me you know so if you are uh, teaching uh, this sunday it's good to start preparing from the previous friday or maybe the monday that means you should have you should have started yesterday or on friday of the last week you should have started preparing uh, so you prepare one week in advance now why am i saying you need to prepare one week in advance so that you know when you come across uh, when you thinking about the lesson, then you can think about your personal life uh, 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 events and say, hey, I can talk this to the children. So what are the aspects I can share with them that will, they will understand? Or if you read a, a story or an incident or you listen to something that happened in somebody's life, you can use that as a real uh, life testimony, a real life example. Uh, if you read something in the newspaper, see something in the news, you can 
uh, share that as well. You can think of an object lesson. You can think about a creative activity of, a, of an attention getter. So all this is basically going to help you to think through in the week and how you can put things together. And then by Friday, you'll have, you know, can you can have everything written out, sorted out, and you have more clarity on what you are going to teach. And also, you can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to give you ideas. Okay, preparing for your class a day or two prior may not be effective, helpful, or beneficial. I think most of us do that, but it's not going to be helpful, beneficial, or effective. Okay, and an important thing to keep in mind is when you're when you're preparing for a lesson is to write down all that you are going to say. Okay, uh, even as I'm going to keep sharing a lot of things, you will realize why I'm saying that it's important to write down all that you are going to say. So some of the things uh, uh, what I would like to mention uh, now uh, why is it important for us to write down all that we say. Um, can somebody help me? Hear some voices, at least that was my monotonous voice. Why is it important to write down your entire lesson? What you're going to say? It gives clarity of thought. Yes, thank you, Divya. It gives you clarity of thought so that you can teach children with much more clarity. Yes. What else? Why is it important? And yeah, maybe so that you don't miss out on the details. Sometimes, uh, like when we have subdivisions in the curriculum, we focus more on some things and we can't just be there. You have to cover the curriculum so you don't miss out on the details. And also, there's a flow in the class. You exactly know what's next. Uh, you're going to speak, you're not uh, struck anywhere. And the children's know the, the teacher as. Even I think the children also notice whether the teachers are prepared or they're, they're just coming and just saying something. So, yeah. Yes, very good. Uh, you said first one was? You didn't, you don't miss out on the details. Very important. Yes. And then there is a flow. Yes, even as Zelotori says, it helps you to have a, a good flow of the lesson, systematic flow in the lesson. Yes. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? It also helps you to know exactly the important points you need to say, what is necessary and what you it, uh, does not is, is important, but is not important for this age group to be said now and uh, what you should you know, say in that 30 minutes, okay? Otherwise, we can end up saying, talking from Genesis to Revelation, but, you know, we can just keep the, exactly to the important points. Rem remember, children have very less attention span. Even we have very lit little attention span. So everything that we learn in a 40, here in a 40 minute sermon or one hour sermon, it goes out of our head. Only a few things remain. So it's important to keep the May, uh, uh, you know, uh, write down so that you are sticking on to the important points. Also, when you write down, you're ensuring whether you're keeping to the main truth of the lesson. And the main truth of the lesson is running throughout the lesson from the introduction to the conclusion and the application. So the main truth is running throughout the lesson. Okay. You're not digressing, you're not jumping from one truth to another truth, but just one truth you're holding on to and you're just running through with the entire lesson. Also that your objectives are being met, okay? And also that you can choose relevant activities, object lessons, um, and know how to cater to the different styles, learning styles and the different intelligences. You all missed out that, you know? So how with all the activities, what am I going to do? Uh, do to cater to the different uh, sty uh, learning styles and the different intelligences, okay? Uh, another reason why it's important for you to write down everything that you're going to say is then you'll realize that, hey, there's so much of content along, you know, and uh, how, where am I going to fit in time for the activity, the discussions, the skit, or a craft that I have, the coloring page. Hey, I don't even have time for mem to teach them the memory verse. So where am I going to fit all of this? So then you'll decide and you'll say, hey, 
you know, um, I will remove this activity because I'm going to do this object lesson. I think this is object lesson is better. I'll have this few discussion questions because it's important to learn this learning style. You know, uh, whether this activity, this uh, discussion is catering to all the learning styles, the intelligences, or should I incorporate something else? And, uh, you know, where can I break this lesson into two? Okay, so where can I break this lesson into two uh, so that, you know, I will bring the first part of the lesson to a good conclusion and what will be the application and then where I can continue from uh, this point onwards to uh, in the next class or if I'm not teaching the next teacher. So where can there be a continuity a flow? Otherwise, you will abruptly stop and then you know you will not be able to do any application uh, no conclusion and you would not be able to do the activities teach them the memory verse so it's important to write down because then you know hey this is going to take more than 30 minutes i won't have time for this 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 and so you can you know uh, have it all neatly written down now once if everything is written down you'll be more confident to teach and handle the class there will be no waste of time. There'll be no confusion, and like um, uh, like you said, you know there'll be a good flow in your class. Okay. Now, when you begin writing your lesson plan, what are the things you need to keep in mind? The first thing when you're writing the lesson plan is, apart from the topic, you'll have the lesson objectives. When you're writing the lesson objectives, you need to ensure that the main lesson objective, which is the main truth or the central point should be reiterated throughout the lesson. Whether you're doing object lesson, attention getter, discussion, you know, telling the story, whatever introduction, the central truth, the main truth should be reiterated throughout the lesson. Don't deviate from the main truth, okay? The narrative, the Bible narrative, the object lessons, attention getters, activities should all reiterate the main truth or the central point. Okay. Now, for example, uh, you are talking about uh, uh, your chosen Zacchaeus' story. Okay. Uh, now you're talking about Zacchaeus' story, and uh, your topic is, you know, that um, God loves everyone. Okay, or uh, God, uh, you know, uh, knows our sin. Okay, sin and salvation. God sees our uh, sin. Or if you're talking about um, God loves, uh, yeah, God loves everyone. Now, what is the uh, when you and you choose you're choosing uh, Zacchaeus' story as the uh, narrative. Now, what is now Zacchaeus' story can be used for various to illustrate various truths. What are some of the truths that Zacchaeus' story can be used to illustrate? No, Zacchaeus' story, as a story, Zacchaeus' story, what truths can be illustrated through that? Or what can we uh, use Zacchaeus' story to teach children? We can teach them to be as fair as possible in our dealings. Okay, thank you, Lubega. Yes. Being fair. God forgives. God forgives, okay. What else? You're special to God that he looked at Zacchaeus when he was on the tree as well. Yeah. Yes, you're special to God. God uh and knows you, he wants to encounter you, okay, wants to change you. What else? Ma'am, he was very eager to see Jesus. Okay. Is eager to see Jesus? Uh, some of the truths that we can talk about when you're talking about uh, greed, dishonesty, lying, uh, sin. You know, you can use, uh, or what is true repentance, uh, you can use Zacchaeus' story. But when you're, when you're using Zacchaeus' story to illustrate the point about God's love, it's important that you keep the main truth of God's love running throughout the uh, story for Zacchaeus. Yes, all these truths can be 
uh, use, but then children will get confused if you talk about everything. Of course, you talk about his nature, you talk about um, everything, but you can also talk about it in the sense of connecting it to God's truth. So you can say nobody loves Zacchaeus, okay? Nobody maybe even invited him for their parties in the, uh, you know, birthday parties or wedding, you know, because nobody wanted, even gave space for uh, Zacchaeus to see Jesus, you know, so that's why he had to find another way where he ran away from everybody and maybe he climbed up the tree and he sat down there because he wanted to see Jesus and he didn't want anyone to notice him because they would make fun of him, laugh at him, they would tell Jesus what a cheater he is. I mean, all these de points are not there in the story, we kind of... Uh, you know, uh, reading into it, but there is a possibility. So you can say nobody loved Zacchaeus, but Jesus loved Zacchaeus. See, so even if you're using his greed, his on dishonesty, his lying nature, everything, his sinful nature, you're you're talking about how nobody loved him, but how Jesus noticed him, how Jesus loved him, how Jesus went to a sinner's house. So maybe all the people were talking and saying. What's wrong with Jesus? You know, why does he have to go to Zacchaeus's house? Can't he go to this man's house? Can't he go to Peter's house? Can't he go to James' house? They're such lovely people, such nice people, such godly people. Why to Zacchaeus's house? You know, because Jesus uh, loved Zacchaeus. And uh, in talking about God's love, you can say, you know, uh, when Jesus went to Zacchaeus's house, did Jesus ever say, hey, Zacchaeus, I know all the bad things that you're doing? Or was he waiting for Zacchaeus to say all the wrong things he was doing? And when, when Zacchaeus said, you know, Jesus, I'm cheating people, Zacchaeus, Jesus said, I was waiting, Zacchaeus, all this time for you to tell me that you were cheating people. I know you're cheating people, but, you know, what does God do? He doesn't say a word. You know, he's very quiet. He's just listening. And um, so you can say, what caused that kind of change in Zacchaeus's life? It was the love of God, you know, the love of God that changed him. So, you know, if you're choosing love, you know, that's the main truth and that's the central point and you need to talk and emphasize and reiterate that throughout the lesson without digressing, without going away here, there. You can have so many sermon points in that Zacchaeus story, but point is love. Keep love throughout running as a main truth as a central point to teach in that uh, lesson or that story okay so you can think about ways and how you can uh, uh, run the main truth throughout the story okay so that is the first point is the learning objective the second one in your lesson plan is recap um, begin with a recap of what was taught uh, last week so just write down a few things and uh, it the recap should not just be about children narrating the story because you all know the story but the truths that you have communicated should be the recap and also um, uh, do a, a recap of how how they applied what they learned after recap the next point in your lesson plan is introduction okay now it's important to begin your lesson well you know a lesson that's begun well is half done You're, your job is already half done if you begin the lesson well, because introduction is the place where you capture the attention and the interest of the children. And it's also the worst place you can lose it. Once you've lost their excitement, their interest, you can't gain it again. So it's this is the best place to capture their attention and their interest, and also the worst place um, to lose it. And if you don't have the children's attention, you cannot teach them anything so try to establish how do you make the uh, introduction interesting try to establish a point of contact with the children talk of something which is within their experience something which will arouse their curiosity something which they can identify okay uh, so it's very important that you connect the, uh, this whole introduction to what they are going through, their experience, uh, so will arouse their curiosity, say, hey, I'm going through this, I'm feeling this, I'm experiencing this, and something they can identify, and they would uh, listen to you, and they would pay attention. Now, beginning, the beginning or the introduction of the lesson should also have a clear link to what follows next. It's pointless to have an outstanding introduction 
uh, but if it does not lead into the rest of the lesson, it's pointless and baseless. And you will uh, need to succeed in keeping the attention of the children uh, throughout the lesson, even as you have a good introduction, you know, sometimes you can have a great introduction and the rest of the lesson can be boring and you will lose the attention of the children. So make the introduction or the beginning a stepping stone to the rest of the lesson. But it's important to keep the uh, introduction or the beginning brief. Remember, you have the main body of the lesson that has to follow. You know, be careful not to give away the secret of the lesson in the introduction or in the beginning. For example, don't start your introduction by saying, hey, children, today we are going to hear about a man called Jonah who was swallowed by a big fish. Now, if you say that as in, in your introduction, it's like you've completed the entire lesson that you want to teach in half an hour. You've told that story in just 17 words. And now you'll have all the children say, Ma'am, I know Jonah's story and I've seen it in the cartoon. I've seen it here. I've heard it here and all that. And you will just, and they'll say, oh, I already know. So why should I listen? Okay. So don't, uh, you know, begin your introduction uh, in, in that way. Also avoid introductions like now sit up, fold your hands. I'm going to teach you about the need to repent. They'll say, oh, God, no, you know, or uh, uh, that, you know, your sin takes you away from God or that we are all sinners or we need to obey God or God loves everybody. They'll say, oh, we all know this, you know, day in and day out, people are telling us the same thing. Tell us something new. So don't give away what your topic is, what you're teaching them. You know, maybe that is what you're going to teach them about the need to repent. But you must first of all get the young ones attention. So try to get their attention in various ways. So how do you get their attention? Uh, your introduction, in your introduction, you can use attention getters. Uh, now, uh, begin with an attention getter, you know, that will build their interest. It's a starting point to what you're going to teach them, how you're going to introduce this uh, topic. So for example, I'm going to teach them about prayer, which is a topic which most children will not like. So how will I uh, introduce my topic for prayer? Okay, so I just have a tray here. I don't I, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? No. Okay. I'll just do this. Yeah. Uh, are you able to see now? So I have a phone here. I'll just show this to the children. You know, I have a cover here with a letter inside and then I have a newspaper here okay so I will ask those who are interpersonal those are bodily kinesthetic to take this around because they like by doing you know uh, children who learn by doing so they would uh, uh, take it around now some of them who like to smell they can smell the newspaper you know th th those who like to learn by touch they can just you know pick up whatever they want and uh, you can say, okay, what is, um, you know, uh, you can ask them all the things displayed on the items on this tray, you know, what do they have in common? Okay, what is the answer? All of these items, the newspaper, the cover, the letter, and this um, phone, okay, what do they have in common? Means of communication. Yes, thank you, uh, Divya. They are all means to communicate with each other. Okay, so then you can uh, can say, okay, so all these are means to communicate with man. How do we communicate with God? Okay, so just a simple attention getter. Okay, also another um, way you can use is you can get um, children to make uh, in twos okay choose tell them to choose a partner they don't know well and for the next two or three minutes you can get to know each other okay and try to get as much information about your partner so give them two or three minutes and then you know um, after two three minutes you can ask them how did you did you get to know the other person so uh, they'll say yes. Then you can say, how did you get to know the other 
per se. So what would be some of your answers if you were in my class? How did you get to know each other? You spend time with them. Okay, Jeffina says spend time with them. How did you get to know each other in this activity? By asking questions. Yes, thank you. You ask questions. When you ask questions, you got to know more about your partner. What else? Hello, class. <laughs> what else? What are you all doing now to me, with me? You're listening to me, right? <laughs> it's not just important to ask the questions. And what if you just ask the questions and you just tell your partner, hey, uh, wait, I'll go, but I'm not interested in listening to you, and you go away. All you need had to do was you had to wait and listen. Okay, so you say the same is true when we communicate with God. So in communication, what are the things that are important? You need to listen. You need to speak, and you also have to. Uh, uh, reiterate what you have heard is right by saying, talking, uh, uh, by uh, repeating what the person has said. Okay, so the same is true about uh, you know communication with God. And you can say, what do we call communication with God as? What do we call it as? Prayer. Okay, and then you can keep going on in your um, lesson. Okay, so what do we call talking and listening to God as prayer? Or you can do a skit, okay? You can have two actors. Basically, you can give them the dialogues beforehand, or you can tell them uh, one week in advance, or you can just um, call them during the week. So you can have two children, you know, um, both of them facing their backs to each other and, you know, kneeling down in a chair and praying. So uh, when one finishes one sentence, the other can say another sentence. Okay. So you just have the dialogues written so they can just follow and read it from the paper. So one child is basically saying thank you prayers. And the other child is basically, um, uh, you know, praying give me prayers. Okay. So for example, child one says, dear God, thank you for my mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle. And the other child says, "Dear God, I love you. Please help me with my exam. Please help me get uh, get, uh, get me help me get good marks." Then child one again says, "Thank you for my bed. Thank you for my cricket bat, my football. Thank you for my cycle." And child two says, "Please help me to play good cricket tomorrow, God. Please help me to play like um, Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin Tendulkar is a famous batsman in India, and please let my team win." Um, and, um, you know, um, the child continues to say, uh, the, the first child says, thank you for my food, though I'm very tired of eating, uh, you know, uh, rice and dal, which is staple food here in India. Uh, I would rather have some pizzas or, uh, uh, you know, uh, burgers for lunch. Uh, thank you for my books. Thank you for my friends. Child two says, please give me a new jacket and a new shoes um, and a, a, a nice new mobile. So, you know, the dialogues can go on. And then you can ask children what kind of prayers these children or these boys or girls were praying. So it was basically what kind of prayers? Child one was basically praying what kind of prayers? Thank you prayers, okay. And child two was praying. Give me prayers and help me prayers. Okay. So then you can ask children, have you prayed like these children? And, uh, you know, um, uh, so basically our prayers are all about God. Thank you. And God give me and God help me. Um, but is prayer all about this? Uh, then you can tell them, you know, actually Jesus knew that we will we would really not know how to pray, and he gave us a pattern for prayer. Would you like to know about this pattern for prayer? Because you're basically teaching them in the prayer, you're teaching them about the Lord's prayer. And so you can, you know, um, you can teach them. Say, how many of you find it difficult to pray? How many of you don't like to pray? So you're actually connecting with children's felt needs, okay? How many of you feel that prayer is boring? Why do you find prayer difficult? Uh, why do you find uh, it boring? Why do you find it difficult to pray? Because children will say, because we don't know what to pray. 
all we know is this kind of prayer thank you prayer give me prayer uh, you know please be with me prayer or help me prayer okay so then you can say okay uh, i'm going to teach you how to uh, pray and it's going to be more interesting than just these uh, thank you and give me and help me prayers would you like to know what is the pattern for prayer okay so those are some of the things that you can do now uh, for example you're teaching them about uh, god's word a good attention getter is to have uh, you know some books so you can just say hey i have some books here with me okay so you can say uh, what is different um, you know do you have do you like reading books at home? Uh, do you like reading? Do you go to the library in school? Do you read books? What kind of books that do you read? So you can give them all some books. They can just kind of, you know, those who are who like to learn by seeing, by touching, um, and all of that by connecting with each other. You can ask those people to children to help you distribute those books. Then you can distribute those books and then you can uh, tell them, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, ask them how each book is different from each other. So one is about a dictionary. You know, you can say a dictionary helps us with uh, uh, finding out the meanings for words. Then there is an encyclopedia, which gives us knowledge about various things. It's a geography book, it's a history book. Uh, it's a storybook and then then you have a bible as well so you you know say okay how is a bible different so the child with the bible will say how the bible is uh, different okay so then you can start your lesson you're saying you know a bible is god's book and uh, you know it's different why is it different because it's god speaking to man okay or you can start your attention getter with um, a quiz you can ask them Hey, how many books are there in the Bible? Okay, all of you are uh, children in my class, attending my class. How many books are there in the Bible, children? Just joking. How many books are there in the Bible? I'm asking you all. Huh? 66, okay. Uh, then you can say the Bible is divided into two parts. All of you in class. Yes, no. Okay, only Jeffina. Thank you, Lyndon. Yes, okay. Okay. So uh, the Bible is divided into two parts. Uh, so what are the names of each section? New and Old Testament. How many books are there in the New Testament? How many books are there in the Old Testament? Then you can ask how many authors wrote the Bible. So all those who are logical, mathematical, they will think, they will reason, you know. They were trying to find out 66 books, so they will count whether it's 39 plus 27, 69, or you know, 66 or what. And how many years was the Bible written? Okay, so you can start off with um, uh, a quiz, or you can use a game, you know, um, uh, to start with your attention as an attention getter. But teaching about faith, you can have, you know, you can blindfold a child and you can say i'm going to give you directions and i want you to go to that place i don't want anyone to help them i don't want to use your hands and then you can say okay you give them directions and then they have to go and they have to sit in a chair which you have placed in a certain part the certain part of a room okay and then when you tell them okay um, they're still blindfolded you can say now i want you to sit down so they will be a little scared because they don't know where they are sitting. But, um, you know, they shouldn't use their hands or legs. And when they sit down, just ensure that you make sure that they're sitting on the chair. Just put the chair towards them. So then you can talk about, you know, this is faith. Faith is you can't see, but yet you believe, the, uh, you know, uh, someone or something. And you hope that what uh, is going to come about, what uh, you are hoping for is uh, is good okay so you can um, use that as an attention getter okay or you can also use object lessons as uh, as the can you show the slides object lesson as uh, an um, uh, introduction to your class now basically object lessons are very creative ways to uh, introduce a topic to reiterate difficult concepts and truths uh, to children um, 
you know, um, and also it is uh, something that will get their attention and attract their attention. Okay, so an object lesson is basically used to illustrate a concept, uh, a point of truth, uh, a learning um, or a story by combining that with an object or, or a trick that will uh, be like a visual aid that will help children uh, remember the lesson. It's not there. Object lessons. No. OK, don't worry. OK, uh, so object lesson is basically used to illustrate a concept, a point, um, a truth, a learning, um, or a story by combining an object um, or a trick um, uh, with the, you know, that will be a visual aid that will help children remember the lesson. So the object lesson can be used to introduce a topic or it can also be late, used later on in the lesson or towards the conclusion, towards the end uh, to, you know, reinforce your lesson for the day, okay? The object lesson uh, will basically attract the attention of the children um, and focus the interest of the children on the main truth that you are teaching okay and object lessons also will serve to remind children again and again of the main truth of the concept um, of the lesson as they see the object they have you have used the object lesson you know later on in their life or in their daily life for example if you teach them about some object you know later on a god can use that same object many years later or maybe a few months down the line to reiterate the truth that you have um, taught them and God, the Holy Spirit can use that uh, to get them back or to help them to a difficult uh, challenge or a difficulty, okay? So we know that Jesus, when he taught, he used a lot of objects in his uh, lesson, right? Look at the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the grass in the field, uh, the birds of the air and uh, the mountain, the fig tree, so all of that he used because of the coin, all that he used is because he knows that when, you know, he's going to go away in just uh, three years, this is ministry, he's going to go away. But these objects will reiterate the important kingdom truths that he has uh, uh, taught them or left them with. So in, in an object lesson, you basically introduce the objects, what you're using, then you teach the basic truth and you relate the objects back to the uh, uh, to the text, Bible text, or to the uh, Bible truth. Okay. Now I'll uh, just give you some examples. You can use even object lessons when you're preaching because I know I I get a lot of ob object lessons for my lessons when I'm writing uh, from a preacher who basically uses it during his sermons on a, a Sunday service at a church, and he has some really interesting ones. Okay. Um, so if you are talking about how God's word can influence us and shape our lives. So basically your topic is God's word and you're using how God's word, talking about how God's word can influence and shape our lives. Now, you know, th this very difficult concept, but you can use an object lesson. Uh, you can take a few large balloons to class and you can ask the children, what are these? So you can hold the balloons and say, what is this? And then they'll say, these are balloons. You can ask them, what is the purpose of this balloon? And uh, they'll say, it's, it's to, you know, blow air into it, um, you know, and it's used for special occasions to make it more, the the you know, to lighten up the occasion or to make the room look bright and special, okay? Um, so you can say like uh, something like this, you know, it basically adds uh, a beautiful festive touch to a space and it can also be used uh, uh, for children to play around with and for fun games as well, okay? Now you can ask them, what if I decided to have a birthday party with lots of balloons? And, you know, uh, so I went to the shop and I purchased a pack of balloons. And, uh, you know, just to have it all ready to blow it up and put it up so children can enjoy the birthday party of my uh, daughter or my son, okay? Now, you say, well, you know, on the day of the birthday party, 
you know, um, I was so busy that I didn't have time to blow the balloons. So what I did was I just took those balloons instead of blowing them, I just put it, you know, in various places in the room. So you just take the balloons and just drop them in various uh, places in around the room. Then you can ask them, would anyone enjoy or get any joy out of seeing them lying on the ground deflated with all those balloons blown? The children will say no. You know, you can say the same way in our lives. You know, uh, you can pick up an empty balloon and say, you know, we are like these empty balloons. So this empty balloon basically represents us. So basically you're introducing the object, you're connecting that with, you know, what it represents so you're saying our lives are like this empty balloon you know but when we receive the word of god you know it'll have effect in our lives when we read god's word when we listen to god's word uh when we memorize when you memorize your memory verses you know why i keep giving you memory memory verses and you keep blowing air into the balloon when you come to children's church you're listening to the word of god you blow the balloon when you go back on uh to, uh, on Monday, you're reading the word, you blow little air. Tuesday, you read God's word, you blow little air. So, you know, the balloon is, uh, uh, you know, is, is, is coming into a shape. And then you can say, just like the what the air does to the balloon, it gives it, you know, a shape. And it now when I put it up, you know, people are able to enjoy the colors, able to bring joy the same way in our lives. You know, when God's word fills us, you know, our life brings joy not only to us, but also to others. Okay. So just a simple object, but we'll teach them how the word of God influences and basically shapes our lives. Okay. Um, now, for example, you can, uh, you're teaching a lesson on um, uh, God wants to do amazing things in and through our lives. Okay or you're talking about the power of God's word, or you're talking about the power of prayer, or you're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, you can have, you know, use this hair dryer. You can say, have your parents ever used this before? Or, um, you know, have you used this? And then you can ask the children, what do you use this for? Okay. So what do you use this for? To dry your hair. Okay, so you can say, hey, actually, my hair is a little wet now. You can, you know, wet your hair and you can say, I want to dry it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to dry my hair. Okay, so can you just give me a couple of uh, seconds when I dry my hair, children? And they will all say, okay. Anyone wants to help me? And so, you know, uh, you can, uh, maybe not now. So you can start and you can, you know, put your, uh, you know, move it up to point one or point two and say, Hey, I don't know why it's not working. It was working just fine yesterday. Uh, why do you think this is not working? Yes, because I've not connected the children. Say, my auntie or you know, uh, teacher, you've not connected this to the plug point. Oh yes, I've forgotten to connect this to the plug. Point, okay, so then you can connect it to the plug point and then use it. And um, so you say, you know, th uh, the same way in our lives, you know, sometimes we feel we don't have the power to overcome sin, and then you can start teaching it because you know we don't have the power of God, and you can talk about you know, the Bible and the prayer, it's the power of God, okay. Um, now, another object lesson that you can use, you can say, is hey. Uh, everyone, how many of you are thirsty and all hands will go up? So you can say, I have some glasses here, okay? And you can say, I have some nice lemonade uh, or uh, 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 an orange juice here. How many of you would like to drink it? Okay, so we'll have all the hands go up and, you know, so you can say, okay, I'll pour out some and uh, I want one child to come and taste. So those who learn by taste and smell they'll come running so you can pour out little lemonade or juice you can give it to them okay and then you can say okay how many more want and everyone's hands will go up and so you say wait a minute and then you take some sand and put it into the uh, the glass and say uh, how many of you would like to drink this now no hands will go up okay um, 
but you can ask the child who drank the lemonade and you can say how does it taste and uh, you know it says it's good tasty and, and I said yeah I tasted it also and say wow it tastes so good it's just so perfect you know I'm so thirsty and then you know um, when you put the smudge you say okay how many of you would like to drink it no hands will go up so why you know, just a second back everybody wanted to drink why do you want don't want to drink it now it's no longer it's dirty it's because of the mud it's no longer good perfect because the mud is put into it and if we drink it we'll get sick okay so then you can talk about sin and salvation how god created everything perfect but you know when we disobeyed god how everything that was imperfect perfect became imperfect and um, bad and then you can talk about sin and salvation okay now, uh, the last two uh, mentoring hours, we were talking about how God is not the author of sickness and pain and suffering. Uh, now, we were teaching about this healing and deliverance to children. And so we wanted to basically tell them that God is not the author of sickness and suffering. Uh, how do we, uh, and we were basically saying that, you know, God is not the author because he can't give us what he does not have. So how do we explain this to children? So I basically thought of this um, attention getter as an object lesson. I thought I'll ask one child in the class, can you give me 1,000 rupees? The child will smile and say, I don't have 1,000 rupees. Um, and I'll go to another child who I know does not have a guitar. And I'll ask, you know, uh, can you give me your guitar? The child will say, no. Why? You know, because I don't have a guitar. Then I go to another child and then uh, who I, may, I make sure before that they don't have a mobile and say, can you give me your mobile, please? You know, they'll say, no, I no, I can't. Why? Because I don't have a mobile. So then you can ask the children, why couldn't all of these children who I asked them to give me specific things, why couldn't they give me what I asked? Because they don't, they cannot give it to me because they don't have it. Just in the same way, God does not have sickness and disease um, in heaven, there's no sickness, disease, pain, suffering in heaven, and he can't just basically give it to us. Okay, just a simple object lesson, but can teach you profound truths. Okay, so difficult concepts. I'll I'll just show one last one. I think that'll be the end for this class. And um, I just bought an egg. Okay, it's not a boiled egg, but a raw egg. Okay, so um, so you say, okay, what is this? And they'll say it's an egg. And uh, you say, you know, uh, you can show the children this egg and say, what happens if I use this fork, okay, and beat this egg? What will happen? Hard. What will happen? It will break, right? Okay, so you can say, uh, what if I take this egg and just throw it on this wall? What will happen? It will break, it will splatter, it will make it'll mess up the place, it'll be stinking. Okay, so you can say, the connect this object to, you know, uh, whoever. So you can say this egg is like us. We are so delicate, sensitive, you know, so open to, uh, uh, you know, if you just fall off from a tree or from the first floor, you can hurt our head, we can even die. Now, this spoon resembles Satan. Okay. Satan is always ready to attack us and break us. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, so he's ready to break us. Okay, and if we don't, now what happens if we, if I put this vessel and cover this vessel into uh, over this egg, and now I use the spoon to beat that egg inside over this vessel. If I beat this vessel, what will happen? Will the egg break? No, my egg is not broken. See? So you can say this vessel is God's protection over our life. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you know, he protects us. We are under the protection. Satan will come to tempt us, destroy our lives, steal our peace and joy. But... You know, God will protect us from the evil one. But if we choose to, you know, we don't choose God. We want to choose the things of the world. We love the world more um, and all of those things. Then, you know, you can talk about the rest of your lesson, how Satan is all out to steal and destroy our lives. But God is our protector. So if your lesson is God protects us, 
you can use this object lesson. So for example, there's so many object lessons like this you can use. Uh, you know, you can use uh, MMMs like this, but th th there's only two colors. Uh, but we have gems with multi colors. And then you can talk about how all of them um, are different colors. But what is there inside? Is the content inside the same? Yes, there's chocolate flavor inside. You know, so even if they look different colors, the the, the content inside is the same. So God has created all of us different, but each of us are unique and uh, special. So all these uh, object lessons are not invented by me. Uh, all of them, I got it from uh, the website, from internet. So you can also go and look and there are very creative object lessons that you can use uh, for uh, teaching your children either as an introduction or to reiterate the truths or somewhere in the middle of the lesson. I thought of finishing our, uh, uh, finishing these, le uh, today is my last day, but um, I still have time because, uh, you know, Pastor Roshan says I can take some more time. So maybe I'll take uh, next week one hour and then just finish the rest of uh, the methods that we can use and, uh, then it will be an end for our children's ministry class. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, there's no time for uh, questions. I will take any questions or doubts that you have uh, next week. Um, have a blessed uh, week ahead and a day, and God bless you. Thank you.